Good morning, everybody. Jason here with AV Pro Global, and I am with Mr. Matthew Murray. And today we're going to be, today we're going to be talking about uh, some of the stuff that happened within the company, within the AV industry in 2021, and some of the things we're going to be looking forward to in 2022. How's it going, Matt? Good. How are you? Great, great. Good to hear from you. Nice, uh, cool morning here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. As usual. Yeah. yeah, I'm wearing my hoodie and my jacket and I'm sweating. It's good times. Um, so looking back, uh, we'll jump right into the good stuff. Uh, what are some of the big wins that we had here at AV Pro Global in 2021? Well, every year we go out with a handful of specific high level goals. So this year we had Axian, which was um, updating and modifying our complete software platform. So taking uh, the user interface, user experience, and moving it one into the cloud, making firmware updates easier, mm -hmm. better user interfaces, stuff like that. Uh, that was kind of a long-term project that we really wanted to focus on getting done this year. That got done. Um, we did some AK. So our, our five kind of pillars, I guess, were Axiom, AK, MXNet, Fiber, and Audio. Right. So. I kind of gauge the success on, you know, what were the high level goals set and boil those down into um, into pieces as you will. But really, those are the things that determine, I think, um, what we had successful and what we didn't get done. So sure, sure. Um, Axion, we did get done. That's complete. That's launched. Mm -hmm. um, MXNet, that's complete. That launch, that was our our most successful launch from a product standpoint ever in terms of uh, volume. So sure. if you look at it in a, in, from a volume standpoint, that was the most successful one. Mm -hmm. um, audio, we've got some work to do, um, but we did start getting um, the, the pieces in place. So we've got product ready to go to production mm -hmm. and final design phases, things like that. Um, AK, we got some AK product launched. Yep. Uh, we have on the AV Pro Edge side, we've got the the MX forty two X. We got one right here, actually. This came out um, on the Meridio side. All of the Meridio products that are currently um, in the marketplace being sold, those all got eight um, K facelifts, and mm -hmm. those and those are all selling now. So next step, you know, is going to be the splitters, sure, sure. and the uh, and the matrix switchers. Mm -hmm. So those are start going to be those are going to start coming. Pretty quickly, the 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 DA and the uh, the DA one four X and the MX eighty eight X, both of those we have in house uh, prototypes. So those sure, are just sure. going through final um, prim and polish before those are ready to go. Um, and then uh, and then fiber, that's been an ongoing project, as a lot of people know, for a long time. But mm -hmm. there there has been considerable progress on that, so we should be seeing uh, some fiber things launch very early yeah. in 2022 so good good yeah I, I will say just from hearing from some of the integrators and stuff that they're really digging the new interface and stuff on the switches it just seems to be you know a lot easier to use and as you mentioned the firmware updates can be over the air and you know it's really really good stuff it brings things into the modern world right so, you know it's just it was time to do it it's painful to make a migration like that sure. but you know it's it's done and it's it's yeah we're very happy with it good good uh speaking of the the 8k stuff like this is a, a four by two and one thing that i noticed that's new is a lot of the newer products especially the mx net stuff have these nice little lcd screens on them just for being able to see things a little bit easier right everything should have stuff like that so you know it's one thing we kind of try to do um, and we're going to continue to do is is try to make the life of the integrator easier mm -hmm. Uh, by adding little things like that. So, you know, we're always thinking about what the end user experience is, sure. but part of that end user experience is, you know, how the um, integrator is able to cope with the install. So right. we, we want to try to add as many um, of these little kind of fringe benefits, so to speak, sure, on, sure. on the product so that it just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker to troubleshoot, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Yeah, the, the common feedback that we get from from integrators and customers that, the, the, they always say, and I know you've heard this a million times, that the stuff just works, right? So now it's uh, now the, the reliability has always been there, but now you have the usability as well. So it's good yep. stuff. Yeah, and I mean that's all of that. The the user interface, user experience mm -hmm. from the the integrator standpoint, all plays into it. You sure. Know? So things work better when 
they have the ability to customize and adapt and yeah. do things. It's yeah. you know that's that's part of that whole good uh, that whole philosophy. You know, yeah. it's the the integrator is the one who makes it work, mm -hmm. and in order for them to make it work, they need the proper tools to sure. be able to do it. And a lot of this stuff comes from the feedback from the integrators, right? Like a lot of these new upgrades and and new little features and stuff. Most of it, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's there's an element of um, you know trying to think of things that we haven't thought of yet, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that integrators bring to the table all the time that we just you know we we try to put into the product. Sure, sure. Yeah. And it it does you know these little screens were were kind of one of those. Yeah, know? integrators were saying, hey, you know, it'd be really great to be able just to see the IP address. So then we're like, okay, no problem, here you go. Right. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of 8K, uh, on the Meridia side of things, we did some major updates this year. Uh, we got the, the, the regular 6A, 6G kit at 8K, the 8K Fox and Hound kit, which has been a super smash hit so far. Yep. And the 7G has been also upgraded to 8K. Um, these are all launched, these are all shipping, and they're all available right now. Right. How did we pull this off with all of the inventory problems that lots of people are having around the world? How do we pull it off to where we have all this stuff in stock? Well, the uh, it's the the short answer is we we stocked up. Right? Yeah. So uh, we kind of saw that there was potentially going to be some shortages on the horizon, mm -hmm. so we bought some key components. Um, really, kind of put ourselves out there and yeah. And got these things in house, and we were taking care of the the ICs ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, these particular products use uh, a uh, a Panasonic chipset inside mm -hmm. that uh, we've been a good customer of theirs for a long time. Sure, we sure. were able to get our hands on on uh, on some additional components and things like that. So uh, that's kind of why you don't see a, the floodgates on on products like this mm -hmm. quite yet, because we're trying to get the test and measurement side done first so, yeah that makes sense um, that kind of follows our whole philosophy is you know test and measurement mm -hmm. always comes first we work on that make sure that people have the gear that they need to be able to test and troubleshoot things yeah um, that includes integrators all the way up to manufacturers sure so everybody can kind of start testing and figuring these things out mm -hmm. and then we can kind of work our way uh, down to the the implementation integration products good 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 um the mxnet system Seems like it's just a smash hit with the integrators out there. Uh, you know, we had it at Cedia, and every time I peeked over at that part of the booth, there just seemed to be a swarm of people kind of gathered around that that rack that we had set up, and, and everybody just seems to love it. Um, what are some some things about MXNet that make it different and special uh, versus other other uh, other brands? And the big thing that makes MXNet really be special is one, it's a ground up integration. So mm -hmm. we started from the IC level mm -hmm. and built our own product. So mm -hmm. it's not a, uh, we're taking an existing component or an existing module mm -hmm. and modifying the port configuration yeah. and modifying some software, doing stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it truly was built from the ground up. That's why we're kind of last out the gate with this, mm -hmm. but um, that's kind of one of our company philosophies is we, we want to own our technology because sure. that means that we can fix things quickly. Very true. There's issues. Mm -hmm. so, so, um, what that means is we're able to one exploit a feature set that uh, is very robust. So I mean, it's it's got everything on it. Um, but the other thing is, is we spend a lot of time on the software side. Yeah. So the software UI UX side is a place that we've always felt um, it's our responsibility to give that to integrators yeah. so that they have the ability to actually utilize this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know exposes all the features on one UI. Um, you don't have to be a, a level three programmer to yeah. be able to use things. <laughs> yeah. You know? So um, that's a big part of it. And the other thing is, is we uh, we we partnered up with the company and built a switch that mm -hmm. um, literally from the ground up from a software standpoint, and it's completely optimized for this application. Yeah. So it's 100% ready-made, mm -hmm. plug-and-play. I was about to ask about the plug-and-play. A lot of people are just glowing it's, about that. It works great, and we and you know there's a superficial user interface coming out that's mm -hmm. going to be able to enable ports for Dante network distribution, oh, yeah. AVB, Very you cool. know things like that are all are all in the works. Um, 
you know, and really it's 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 needed in our industry, not just for MXNet, but for all AV over IP. Sure, you know, there sure. needs to be options for uh, one switchers that are optimized for this application, but also switchers coming from a company um, where there's people who understand what those applications mean and how they work and how mm -hmm. to uh, troubleshoot and further optimize. Good, good, good. And I, I notice here we have two different pieces for MXNet. Let's talk about what these are and what the differences between the two might be. Uh, this one is the, uh, this looks like it's the one gig. Yep, this is one, so this one is a, a not a not quite for sale yet um, due to component issues, but it's, it's coming soon. But the this is the Dante encoder. Ah. Uh, so this one actually has uh, uh, Dante audio on it as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is one gig MXNet right here. Um, just in case there might be some folks out there who aren't familiar with Dante, what's the what's the uh, good uh, good explanation? Dante is essentially is. audio over IP. Yeah. So it puts your audio stream onto the network, mm -hmm. and um, you can pull it off, you know, using any Dante decoder on oh, the market. Cool. So it's, cool. they've kind of standardized on a on a methodology. That's good. So that sounds like it can be used in almost any environment, whether it's a professional environment or even a, a residential environment. Very prevalent in um, commercial pro AV right now. Mm -hmm. I think it'll start coming in uh, residential. You know, I, I know our company is working on some some uh, Dante decoders, some yeah. Dante amplifiers, mm -hmm. things like that, uh, audio bridges mm -hmm. to be able to utilize that in the residential space. Uh, but I think primarily for now, um, it is mostly commercial applications, mm -hmm. but you're right, you'll start seeing it coming. Yeah, good, good. Um, and then there's also a 10G version, right? 10 gig, so um, 10 gig is is coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, planned launch was November, but you know, as reality would have it, yeah, things are kind of getting delayed. Sure. A lot of projects are, kind of getting pushed a little bit, but mm -hmm. that that will be coming out uh, where you'll have less compression, um, higher cost, less compression, mm -hmm. better for HDR, sure. better for Dolby Vision, mm -hmm. better for those types of um, high-end yeah. video applications, mm -hmm. um, but just, you know, a different, a different offering uh, that brings AV over IP, you know, it's a, it's kind of a next level mm -hmm. AV over IP. The, uh, you know, the one thing that we've always really strived for is picture quality. So being able to have the two options seems pretty awesome. I mean, do you see like the one gig uh, might be more, um, well, we're starting to see a lot of 4K and new TVs and even restaurants and bars right now. Mm -hmm. So the 10 gig might be more appropriate for those applications, right? For bars, restaurants, I think one gig is gonna stick around for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, nine times out of 10, you're using a 1080p Total source, yeah. Um, not a lot of compression to get that to one gig. When you start getting into 4K HDR, mm -hmm. uh, moving into 8K, that's going to be uh, using 10 gig infrastructure. Sure. Uh, almost certainly, you know, uh, HD base T has 16 gig mm -hmm. uh, products now. So you know, it's bandwidth is starting to shift up on on copper. Right. Uh, so which is good. Still means we need compression. Totally. You know. So there's totally. Um, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, one of the questions I have here is talking about HD Base T 3.0 and some of the stuff that they were able to pull off uh, with CAT cable, which is pretty impressive stuff. It's good. Yeah. They're, uh, it's 16 gig. Yep. So it's a 16 gig by. Um, you can do gigabit Ethernet and you can do full USB 2.0. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not watered down. It's 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 all 100% there. Good. So yes, they've done an amazing job getting mm -hmm. that to. Uh, to happen over copper. Um, and kind of speaking about that as well with HD Base T, um, our uh, on the Meridio side, our MS Test Pro has been very popular. We've been uh, getting a lot of really good feedback on that product and just how easy it is to certify cables and yep, test things. that's and, a good, that's a great partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, that's not a product we developed ourselves. That's yeah. a product coming from uh, um, M Solutions over in Israel. And mm -hmm. they're they're a partner company of ours. And it was kind of a situation of, you know, Integrators need this technology yeah. to be able to test this stuff. Sure. And you know, we 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 don't want to sit down and make it when yeah. the wheel's already invented. Makes so, sense. Yeah. You know, let's partner with their good friends of ours. They're mm -hmm. good friends of HD Base T. Sure. Um, so it works out really well, and it allows us to get something into the integrators' hands yeah. so that they can actually 
be able to test things for HD base T. Mm -hmm. So sometimes cat cable testers just don't do enough. They're not, yeah, they're not. You know, they're enough. mostly continuity testers. One little fact that people don't really know is that if you're using even the most high-end tester you can buy mm -hmm. when you're testing cat cable, they're typically not testing terminations. Oh, for sure. It's only testing um, cable. Yeah. So it's it's much more complicated to actually look at a termination and mm -hmm. see if there's loss on it and stuff like yeah. that. But that's a that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, probably. yeah. There's so, there's so much going on with it with an HD base T. So just a continuity tester. Just yeah, you're right. It just doesn't seem like it's enough. So that's been a really good piece for us too. Um, uh, something else that we can talk about this year. Um, our company continues to grow. I feel like we're we're adding new positions and, and bringing in new people all the time. Uh, what are some of the key positions and roles that are, are being filled to best serve our customers? So we've added a lot in the last couple of years. So obviously tech support customer service. Mm -hmm. So we're we're uh, shoring that up more and more. Mm -hmm. um, we've added in-house uh, software people yep. who essentially work on um, software development and work on driver integration. Mm -hmm. So we have those people brought in house. We have um, network engineers brought in house to support um, AV over IP, mm -hmm. um, and not just network engineers. Network engineers who specialize in how to do networking right. with AV, mm -hmm. because there's a, there's a lot of people in the networking world who don't really deal with the AV component. Sure. So. Uh, so that's in house. So yeah, I mean, we're constantly trying to bring in more product managers, yeah. support people, sure, things sure. like that. That's one thing that we've always gotten excellent feedback on is the customer support. So you know, keeping that team rolling in that direction is awesome. Yeah, um, we we're talking a little bit about some long distance uh, solutions. We mentioned HD base T. We mentioned fiber. We mentioned MXNet. But something else I think is super cool. Just as an enthusiast of this of this stuff. Um, we have the new 48 gig uh, bullet train HDMI cables and also the uh, fiber optic, uh, the AOC cables for HDMI as well. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I, I'm talking to people all the time who really want to preserve the picture quality as much as possible with the least amount of compression as possible. And that really comes down to having an actual HDMI cable. So um, as far as the 48 gig stuff goes, what are we looking at these days as, as far as distances for the cable itself? Well, on copper, we stop at four meters. Mm -hmm. um, you could go further, but the cable gets bigger. Sure, totally. So yeah. it's just it's kind of one of those things of it's a matter of practicality more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, after four meters, it goes to fiber optic. Yep. So um, you're going into an active cable, which you know it, it kind of is what it is. You know, yeah. we we need active cables to hit those new bandwidth totally. levels now. So. Mm -hmm. um, Passive copper is is going to get shorter and shorter as yeah. time goes on. Yeah, yeah. Um, something else that's new that I, when I saw this, I said to myself, you know, as a calibrator, I'm like, I need one of these ASAP. It's one thing I think um, there's tons of applications. That was just the first thing that came to my mind. Let's talk a little bit about this uh, bullet train uh, USB extension. Yep. So basically, when we put in the um, AOC fab over in uh, Shenzhen, we yeah. added. Uh, we added staffing and we added construction manufacturing and, mm -hmm. and things like that over there to be able to, you know, we're building these cables ourselves. Yeah. The module is is a module that uh, that we built. So this is an example of an application that customers brought to us mm -hmm. um, about doing USB cameras and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, specifically commercial world conference room, things sure. like that. And, and it was something we um, were able to be able to put together. And, it, and it's a um, it's been a phenomenal piece mm -hmm. it's you know usb extension has always been kind of challenging and kind oh, of very expensive for sure so it kind of it kind of brings it down to down to real world mm -hmm. um, it's a backwards compatible version so that's oh, why good. it's a, that one's a, a hub mm -hmm. so you see the the hub on the end of it so sure uh, we got creative to to be able to make it go a very long distance but still be backwards compatible because that's 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 a challenge with just a straight short sure. AOC cable mm -hmm. is there can be 3.0 or 3.1 mm -hmm. but then they can't be 2.0 yeah it's only one way yeah 
you know, and and uh, the the way we're able to pull off these links with it being as challenging as it is, uh, these are embedded with fiber too as well, right? Yep, it's using uh, Clearline fiber. There's two strands of fiber inside of a USB cable, mm -hmm. um, just because of the way they do their, um, you know, their data transfer is only requires two, whereas okay. the HDMI cables require four. Yep. Uh, so it's it's just a, a bit different in and and how the two technologies work. Sure, sure. Uh, a lot of people would assume USB needs more fiber, more mm -hmm. more high speed connections, but it doesn't. It it only needs two. Oh, good, good. Um, and what kind of lengths are we looking at for for these guys? All the AOCs we can do up to 100 meters. Wow. So this particular what's productized today, I think we go up to 20, mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's 40. Yeah. It you know it's it kind of depends on customer demand, but sure. You know, making an AOC one of the 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 beautiful things about where we're at is we're able to pivot because you know we're a smaller company yeah, uh, yeah. and we have our fab facility that that we that we run. Mm -hmm. If the demand comes for um, ten hundred meter cables, yeah. we can yeah. easily just make them. Yeah, just make them. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so I know you're a, a big enthusiast of this industry, like I am. Um, did you have anything that you saw this year um, out there in the market for AV that really stood out to you? Well, um, it's been difficult because there hasn't been a lot of uh, those of us that went to the trade shows. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they were pretty watered down. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of sure. the big manufacturers weren't there that kind of have the the exciting displays and things like yeah. that. So that yeah. was unfortunate. So we didn't really get to see anything big and grand on that scale. Yeah. You know, True. But the yeah. things that the things that I see happening are uh, are walls. That's kind of the biggest thing that, yes. that I know our company's focused on. Yes. If we're if if we're looking into a crystal ball, if there is one, you know, I, I think that the next phase of humanity is gonna be, <laughs> you know, you have a whole wall sure. and it's and it's all a display and you've got 15 different things up on the screen. Right. Uh, you know, so it's managing. Uh, it's it's still going to be managing multiple yeah. sources. It's the same stuff, right? Yeah. It's it's same. It's the same, but it's different. But that's mm -hmm. what I think is is exciting. You know, I mean, I do think I I think that we're very close to that being a reality yeah. where you can you know press a button and there's an 8K camera outside your yeah. house and it's just transparent. You right. Know, you're looking outside all the time. Yeah, that's very cool. Very like it'll give it a very realistic look. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, with, with that being said, with uh, with the walls and stuff, it the, the question changes now. It goes from what size screen are you thinking about to how big is your wall? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> we can fill the whole thing up if you want yeah. to. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 true. Yeah. Right? You know, you go and take a measurement, and mm -hmm. that's how much wall space you need to cover. So. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, but we're starting to see these things that 1,000 nits with perfect black and P3 color. I mean, it's going to it's gonna be a game changer as far as, like, just watching movies or even multitasking, like what you mentioned before. Right. Well, one of the things I don't think a lot of people realize is HDR was essentially built to mimic human vision. Absolutely. So yeah. when we go into things like VR or um, living situations with the wall TV, mm -hmm. you know, things aren't looking fake anymore. Yeah. You know, so TV has looked fake for a long time. Even mm -hmm. when we got to HD TV, yeah, it was more clear. Right. But it still looked fake. It's still right. So we're dealing. We're we're really getting to the point where uh, projected images and display imaging devices look real mm -hmm. and so we're going to want to do more with them yeah and I, I totally you're hitting the nail on the head and we know this stuff is coming we've been working on some of this stuff with some of the cd groups that we're part of oh yeah and um you know just talking about um talking about getting those signals to a wall like that we talked a little bit about the aoc cables we talked a little bit about the uh the bullet train hdmi cables uh, what is going on right now in the world of just straight fiber? What are some of the things that we're kind of working on and looking forward to? Fiber, uh, that's been a um, a project for us for many years. Yeah. So I think we started working on fiber uh, three to four years ago. Let's say 2018 so, or so feels about uh, right. We've, we've been integrated in the world of fiber for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to uh, modernize everything and bring things into the fiber realm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're there, you know, like I said earlier, we're going to be launching some products very, very, very soon. Good. Uh, you know, there's so much that goes into it. Um, and I feel like a broken record because I get asked <laughs> all the time about fiber yes. almost daily. Right. 
uh, I, I do know that there's demand, but it's a, it's you know developing a a a, a process. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not just developing a module or right. a PCB it's or something. something on a chip, right? Mm -hmm. We have to develop a process on how do you successfully manufacture twenty thousand lenses at a time, right? So you make twenty thousand lenses, they have to be perfect mm -hmm. because you're splitting light and you're you know you're taking um, certain wave wavelengths to sure. do certain things and yeah. Um, our particular module um, that we've developed is is six channels. Mm -hmm. So that means you need six lenses, mm -hmm. and you need six lenses on both, both sides. sides. Yeah, and it needs to be able to tolerate uh, ons and offs. Right, right. So that's been a a known thing with fiber for a long time. Just mm -hmm. like your projector yeah. turns on and off, it wears out the lens over sure. time. Right. Absolutely. So what you need to do is develop something made of very special materials mm -hmm. that doesn't wear out over time and it's right. it's a it's it's a big 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 job yeah and it's a big process but um uh, we've we've got that kind of down now yeah yeah so we, we you know we've had we've had prototypes um now it's a reality so fiber is is definitely a part of the future yeah you know there's no way around it we're at 48 gig right now right um uh, you know bandwidth doubles it seems mm -hmm. or triples i mean in this case it went from 18 to 48 yeah, big so, uh, you know that's we expect that mm -hmm. i mean that's that's what we want to happen we want things to get better and better yeah. so uh, our way our transport mechanisms mm -hmm. they're going to need to evolve sure you know sure. and fiber uh, fiber is there yeah, and you know we we've been seeing some numbers already about what might be next gen, and I've seen some numbers like 176 gigs. You know, I mean, of course, this is way out in the future, but you know, fiber is going to have to be the solution for something like that. Well, bandwidth. I think that there will be some efficiencies created to yeah. do it over copper. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't doubt um, our engineers to be able to figure out a way to put more data mm -hmm. on lower frequencies. Sure, so that you know that's. Really, the issue with copper is the maximum frequency response mm -hmm. and how much data you can fit on it, uh, and that always gets more and more efficient. Totally, so yeah. That infrastructure is there. You mm -hmm. always have compression. You can always do front end compression sure. to get the baseband video to move and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, copper is not going away. And, oh yeah. You know, sure. having cat cable in your wall mm -hmm. is still better than not, right? Oh, I mean, sure. if you think about what cat cable is, it's a bunch of twisted pairs, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got uh, several wires yeah. versus when you were doing coaxial cable, mm -hmm. you had how many pieces of copper? Just one. Just one. Yeah. That's all you got. Yeah. So, you know, it's everything is in multiples. Yeah. Yeah. And um, once we get to that, uh, to that point where we're doing fiber, um, what do you anticipate seeing as far as distance goes? Fiber is probably going to be around a thousand feet multi-mode. It's yeah. going to be comfortable zone. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's going to be kind of what we're calling last mile fiber. Yeah. Is, you know, it's it's throughout the house. Sure. So single mode will be there. So mm -hmm. single mode can go as long as you want it. To yeah, go. <laughs> go forever. Yeah. Um, but you know, for practical application purposes, mm -hmm. about a thousand feet is yeah. is going to be more than enough and. 99 percent of the places yeah that's and a, it's a good distance most people are already pulling fiber yeah you know they're preparing for this to happen to be able to go and upgrade customers and get them to the right the next big thing so that's uh, a one thing that we we preach a lot in our classes is you know go ahead and just run it you know have the have the project pre-wired with cat and fiber because you never know you don't want to tear the house apart and tear the walls apart in 10 years when you have to or five years when you have to upgrade everything i don't think at this point any homeowner, if you're doing a new construction, is going to tell you no, they don't want fiber. Yeah, good point. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it should be there. Um, there's a lot of forthcoming applications for it beyond AV. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of networking products that are going to use fiber direct. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just it's so in our face at this point. Yeah, you know, it's the writing's clearly on the wall that sure. fiber's coming. Sure, good, good, good. Um, so that those were the main questions I had, Matt. Um. Other than other than things we've already talked about so far, um, uh, what are you excited about for 2022? Just in general, with AV, the industry, with what we're doing, um, 
well, we're gonna have some fun. I kind of work, you know, in in my my realm and the things that I am excited for that are forthcoming. You know, the getting this fiber thing to the finish line mm -hmm. is is top of the list. Mm -hmm. um, expanding the MXNet ecosystem is top of the list. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if, like our our kind of pillars, so to speak, are are uh, are really it's fiber MXNet expansion. Um, cloud management expansion, yeah, so yeah. getting so getting things more uh, deeply embedded into the cloud, mm -hmm. uh, getting software more flushed out, sure. getting the audio ecosystem done. Mm -hmm. um, audio over IP is yeah. is one of those kind of pillars that we're going to be focused on. So, um, you know, a, a lot of new developments happening, a lot of new products coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know. Tom's sitting back here. He he probably knows the number better than me, but we've launched probably 15 to 20 products just this year. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that we're going to be slowing down in that. You right. know, I mean, it's you know we're trying to round out being a solutions company mm -hmm. and being able to offer a, a wide array of solutions to get this job done and in many different ways sure you know. sure good good um let's take a quick peek and see if there's any questions from the viewers and thank you guys for hanging out with us this morning uh let's see if we got anything here um i'm actually not seeing any questions tom do you see any questions on your end wow okay well guys i mean it's super easy to find us um mine's super easy jason at radio.com matt how can the folks get a hold of us same way matt at avproglobal.com yeah cool so, um, and sort of as we mentioned before, uh, we take the feedback from you guys very, very seriously. So if there's ever a feature you'd like to see, or you know, I wish this thing could do this, or I wish the thing had a little screen on it, uh, anything like that, guys, feel free to let us know. Our, our one of our biggest company mantras for this entire time has been we want to make tools and products that are easy for you guys to use. So if there's anything we can do to help you out and make your life easier, please, uh, please let us know. Cool, cool. Any uh, final words there, Matthew? No, that's it. But, right. you know, we appreciate all of the integrators out there that are installing our stuff and right. um, look forward to helping you guys out in uh, 2022. It should be a, I think it's going to be a good, busy year again. So. Good, good. Well, everybody have a great holiday. Again, if you need anything from us at all, uh, go ahead and reach out to us. Uh, we continue to put a lot of new things on the both the Meridio and the AV Pro YouTube channel. Feel free to check that stuff out. There's some good tutorials and just how to do, you know, um, setting up things and, and um and just kind of walking you through that stuff. We want to we want to give you guys as much support as possible. If you're ever stuck out there in the field, we've expanded the tech support hours a little bit. So you know, feel free to give us a call if if you're stuck out there. Maybe it's evening time. You know, give us a call because we're going to be able to help you there too. So good job on that. I know that was a lot of work to expand those hours. Um, yeah. Other than that, guys, have a wonderful holiday, and uh, we'll see you in 2022. Thank you.